Hi, this is Debbie. And this is Yolanda. And we are so excited that you're back with us for week six challenge of the Top Chef. We are adoring everything that you are sharing out on Twitter. We love seeing into your classrooms and the strategies that you're using. And you're just doing great things for kids. We also loved the Twitter chat we had this week on grit. If you've not uh, heard about grit, you might go online and look on Twitter for hashtag Canyon ISD chat and see all of the different things that were shared out about developing gritty kids and becoming gritty teachers. Loved it. Thanks so much for that. We are also grateful for Amarillo National Bank. We love your participation and partnership and just supporting us. So thank you, Amarillo National, for the iPad Mini this week. This week's Quick Fire Challenge, there's five of them. I'm going to let Yolanda tell you a little bit about them. Great, Debbie. I'm really excited to be a part of this week's uh, challenges. And you'll see that we have Hot and Cold, Reflection Response Museum Walk, uh, Debbie's going to tell you a little bit about Venn diagrams later in, in the recording. And then I'm going to uh, highlight synectic snowball and blind sequencing. So here you will see that we are showcasing blind sequencing and you'll notice that there are a list of events. Those come from the Roman period from about 500 BC to 600 AD. So in world history class, um, a teacher might write the names of the events on popsicle sticks and then ask students to order those events uh, based on their prior knowledge. The important thing about this strategy is that students do this before they've been exposed to any instruction about the concept. So we wouldn't want to do this after. This is something that they do before. It's to build on their background knowledge, really allow kids to think about why and make, make decisions about why they think these might come in that order. And so <clears throat> students would participate in putting in those in order. And then um, the teacher would come back and clarify and verify the correct sequence. Um, with the, this many, uh, Debbie, I probably wouldn't as a teacher go over all of those at the beginning of the unit. And so I might say, let's talk about what you chose for your first three events. And so we might compare and talk about those and I might clarify and verify which three would come first and then we would proceed with the unit of instruction. And after we finished with those three, we might have them get those back out and let's talk about, would you make any changes about the sequence of events for the um, others that will follow and give the kids an opportunity to do that before we begin the next part of the instruction. So just an idea that you can use with blind sequencing. Another thought is maybe in math, um, we might get a story problem and have uh, the students uh, uh, solve that. They might tell what order of operations they would use to solve that problem. Um, so that's just an idea. Or in science, they might look at the life cycle of a butterfly and talk about what what might come first, next, and last and predict that before we, we cover that maybe in our kinder or first grade. So just some ideas around blind sequencing. But again, the most important part of this is that it becomes that we do this activity before the unit of instruction begins. Great, Yolanda. Tell us about another one. Okay, this one's really fun too. This one's called Synectic Snowball. And in the picture here, you'll notice on the top left that uh, the teacher is asking the students to make predictions about something. So uh, she gave the students a, a ready-made sheet that they can actually write their prediction on. So you'll notice underneath the bottom left picture, the students making their prediction about what might happen in the story. And then this is where the fun part begins. So they uh, have the students crush their uh, paper into a snowball and we toss it around the room. And you'll want to help students really be mindful of um, the instructions for this activity because it could be a little chaotic, but it's a lot of fun and students love this. But the students would toss their snowball and then um, another student would pick up a random snowball off the ground and I would read what someone wrote. But at that point, I would probably do this independently. So I might do this two or three times. So pick up, read, wad it back up, retoss, have kids read two or three. But on that fourth time, I would want students to pick up one and then form a group of four. And then let's maybe talk about which one of these uh, snowballs or the predictions that were made from the four snowballs that we have, which one would be, which one do we think that we like the best? And then we might share that out with the rest of the group. I love this idea. Thanks so much for sharing. One of the things that's really neat about this picture, though, if you look down in the bottom where it's talking about the tweet, it actually says making predictions, and it's the hashtag GISD Game On. And that's for Galveston ISD, our friends in the very 
opposite end of the state are doing a very similar game as ours, but it's called Game On. If you want to go out and look and see what all they're tweeting and doing, I think you'll really like seeing their strategies as well. We're going to talk now about Venn diagrams, and I know when we're out on campuses, we see the most creative forms of Venn diagrams, so we look forward to seeing what you have for us this week. But one of the things about Venn diagrams, it doesn't matter the form or the shape or how they're created, it's the comparing and contrasting of information that's the power about Venn diagrams and keeps coming back to us time and time again. This week, you're going to have a technology challenge for your sixth name in the hat if you'd like, and you can use Doodle Buddy, Sketch, Edu Creations, Lucid Charts with the Chromebooks, the Google uh, template that I will be sharing with you. They will have either two circles or three, like the one in the picture, maybe a little more challenging, or you can use Google Drawing and let the kids draw their own. So this will be the sixth way to have a technology piece into the drawing this week. Well, I hope you try it. Try something new. So we look forward to that. Amherst National Bank, we thank you again for the iPad donation. We are so grateful. The campus cook-off, oh my goodness, y'all are just wearing us out here trying to keep a count of who's ahead. But right now, Crestview, Chef Williford, you pulled slightly ahead of Reeves Singer and in the race for that hamburger. So we are very excited to see how this all turns out. We also have such a close call, it's even too close to, to say between Gene Howe and Arden Road. And Greenways is in the lead right now, but I'm telling you there's some Westover tweets coming out this week from several folks there and some modeling. So be on the lookout to see what's happening with the green team. Purple team still in a race with Canyon Intermediate in the lead and Canyon High close behind. We are looking at Education Credit Union and just so excited for your support. We thank you so much. Once again, we just want to thank you for your participation. We love that you're being gritty teachers and helping develop kids with grit. So looking forward to seeing what you have this week. And we just want to leave you with Bon, bon Appetit! appetit.